debrief. So as you can see on the slide, we want to hear from our facilitators on what were the key ideas that they heard that will result in quality school leadership, quality teaching, and optimum learning for all schools and the school authority. So um, this is a very important, I believe, conversation to have um, since we all weren't in all of the sessions, but you know, to learn what those key learnings were from the excellent facilitators that we had. So we'll begin that now. We would like um, the facilitators to take you know, two to three minutes. Feel free to ask questions or provide comments if anybody has any to add to our facilitators' comments in the chat box, and we'll, we'll make sure we're monitoring and address those. So to begin with, um, we'll turn it to um, Amber Darrell from Horizon, who was uh, the Curriculum and Assessment Role Alike facilitator. Amber? Thanks, Dexter. Good morning, everyone. Um, we had a group of almost 40 system leaders in our curriculum and assessment group, including at least three who were absolutely brand new, one for sure who started yesterday morning. Uh, so that was pretty neat. I think it was a great opportunity for us to demonstrate the value of our, our collegial network and the opportunities that lie ahead of us when we can work together and share our, our tools, our challenges. And that really was our, our key question is what obstacles are we facing in, in our work ahead and, and what have we been up to over the summer? What guidelines have we put in place? What are we leaning on to help us solve those problems? So when it comes to optimum learning for all, there was lots of discussion about just putting the right pieces in place, leaning on the right systems and structures that would uh, amplify learning, uh, accommodating students whose families are choosing to keep them at home was a, a key aspect of our discussion, probably not too surprising, um, ranging from the logistics of how we are predicting that. We shared some numbers um, in some of our breakout discussions of the proportion of our, our student populations who are who we think are heading that way and also the the nervousness we might feel on the inside of, in not knowing those numbers for sure until we see students and desks this this first week of school coming up. Um, we talked about how to accommodate that the, the tools we're using, including identifying a, a shared scope and sequence in, in a number of our divisions, um, talked about sharing some of the tools, sharing our continuity of learning plans that would help kind of propel us forward in that work. Uh, it gets as granular even as, you know, what are we doing as far as assessments online for those students at home? What does that look like? Um, how are we responding to provincial assessment and what decisions might we be making between now and September 30th? When it comes to supporting quality leadership, uh, a couple voiced the need to be sure we're connecting with school leaders, um, trying to figure out how to navigate being in schools where we normally work alongside our school leadership teams to support them as instructional leaders in, in promoting quality learning. Um, how will we do that when we're not part of the, that building's cohort and, and also serve as good, good role models? Our key, a key theme for us was building confidence that we've got this, uh, highlighting that we're teachers, we've got the teaching and learning part down. We are ready, we know what our students need. Um, we're not medical authorities, so we'll leave those decisions to the, the, those experts and we'll stay in our wheelhouse, our wheelhouse um, with confidence that we will make a difference to our students this year. Um, I think that there's lots of, of great conversation. Those are my, some of my key uh, highlights. And if I've missed anything that somebody wants to bring forward, Val included, uh, please chime in and let me know. Perfect. Thank you, Amber, very much. Again, if you have any questions or additional comments, just put them in the chat. Sounds like it was a great session. Um, next, we'll have uh, the Safe, Caring, and Respectful Learning Environment facilitator, Vincent Beam from Christ the Redeemer, to give us a synopsis of, of their day for a couple of minutes. Good morning. Vincent. Uh, good morning. We um, we broke into two different groups. Brian Angelic um, did the uh, the focus on student wellness, and I facilitated for for staff. So I'll share both of those summaries. Um, both the student and the staff. We started off by 
talking about some of the obstacles we were working to overcome in light of what's, uh, what's going on in the world. Uh, from the student conversation, some of those obstacles included um, quite polarizing viewpoints about what constitutes wellness, uh, as well as um, the unique concerns that uh, are present for meeting um, the mental health needs of English language learners, as well as the ongoing stigma that's attached to uh, mental health and uh, mental well-being. Also was expressed concern regarding uh, the, some of the reorganization of the RCSDs and whether or not uh, CAS, Alberta Health, AHS, Children's Services uh, might be looking to create a different plan, as well as uh, a, a significant obstacle was talked about, about students who for medical reasons can't use masks. How will we uh, meet their educational needs and mitigate uh, risk for them? In terms of staff and some of the obstacles that we see as uh, working through to address um, staff uh, well-being is that there's so much um, information and contrary information uh, going around uh, in, in the news right now about what um, safe re-entry to school looks like, uh, varying viewpoints from uh, so many different stakeholders that it creates a sense of uh, of uncertainty for staff, which uh, is not conducive to promoting wellness. As well as uh, an, a significant obstacle is the, um, the effective communication uh, that we need to be communicating to our staff. We haven't seen uh, our staff face-to-face -face for, uh, for so long. We're relying only uh, at this point on social media and email. And uh, without some of that face-to-face -face time, it's hard to communicate as as clearly as we normally do. The second question that we asked was what new processes or how will we respond to um, um, promoting student and staff wellness? In terms of our students, uh, a continued refocus on many of the supports that school divisions already have in place. Um, uh, zones of regulation, wellness phone, uh, phones, mental health framework, trauma-informed practices were all um, those resources and uh, practices that were referenced. Again, the importance of relationships and connecting to our students and creating that safe and caring environment before we're able to address uh, curricular needs. And again, uh, really looking at the importance of some of those key positions in schools and school divisions, such as our mental health uh, capacity building uh, positions, our family school layout, li liaison positions, how valuable they are, and connecting with our CMP Children's Services. Um, this uh, the student group also did uh, shared quite a few links in, in their chat about different resources that, that schools uh, can rely on. In terms of staff members, uh, again, connecting with our, our staff, being present for them, and the importance of FaceTime that when our, our staffs are back into school, being able to connect with them. Um, one of the, the really clear processes that has changed is um, changing the communication that we have going out to our varying um, employer groups. Teachers, support staff, bus drivers, central office employees, and substitute teachers are all in need of information around wellness, safety, and uh, um, at, at this time, and we need to make sure we're tail tailoring those mes messages to each of those groups appropriately and not overlooking uh, one group. Also being attentive to the resources that uh, we can rely on. Uh, ASEBP, Homewood Health were specifically referenced again. They have uh, met the need in adapting many of the resources to school re-entry and uh, supporting wellness related to some concerns and anxiety around uh, COVID. And part of our conversation was um, really working on the needs of of our principals, our school-based leaders, and our central office leaders. It's so easy for us to focus on the needs of wellness related to students, as well as teachers and support staff, that we want to make sure we don't overlook uh, that our principals and our support staff, our central office leaders also have wellness needs, and we need to be attentive to them. And uh, in some cases, looking to see what we can remove from their plate so they can be attentive to issues related to COVID, which will contribute to their overall uh, wellness and also continue training for our school-based leaders on how to assist their staff in, me in meeting uh, their own personal wellness goals. And that's the summary. Thank you very much, Vincent. Um, again, sounds like a great session. Is there, I don't see any comments, so we'll move along. And again, hopefully you 
if anybody has any questions or comments, things they'd like to share, they can definitely share those out to the rest of us. Um, the next group will be the group from Parkland on operations and logistics. I was in that group and it was fantastic, I'd have to say. So Scott McFadden, Mark Francis, we'll turn it to you now. Thanks, Dexter. Um, I'll, I'll give our summary. So I think overall we had uh, some really good conversation. Uh, we really focused on compliance. How do you know your plans are being followed? Uh, we discussed everything from uh, OHS, classrooms, transportation, facilities, and we got into third party vendors and the legal implications uh, in our COVID world. So um, we discussed what due diligence is required uh, to, to demonstrate your board has taken the appropriate action. So one of the things we focused on is checklists for schools, transportation facilities to show they actually implemented your plans. This will really help when you have to demonstrate compliance with your division's policies and procedures should you enter into any kind of uh, legal situation. Uh, we talked about the importance of clear, concise, and repeated uh, communication out to staff, students, and parents. The importance of countering misinformation and accurate social media, and what tools you can use as a school board to help uh, uh, correct this misinformation. So using your school councils, your social media, your staff to help spread the truth and encounter some of the uh, misinformation out there. Uh, we talked about records retention. Again, another key piece if you enter into any kind of legal action out of this is how do you keep track of your seating plans, be it in the school, on the transportation. Uh, make sure you have those accurate records in case you have to do contract uh, tracing or or whatever, um, OHS reviews of your working stations in case there's any situations there, uh, taking a look at your PPE reviews and, and what processes and, and where you decide to use what PPE and why, uh, cleaning logs uh, for the schools and for transportation on the buses. Uh, you know, uh, preventing a, a COVID outbreak is a shared responsibility between staff, students, and parents. So really ensuring that the stakeholders understand what is required and expected from them. And a number of documents were shared on the Padlet that uh, I think people find uh, useful. It's there for people to use, borrow, and uh, make their own. So uh, that pretty much concludes our summary. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. And again, that was the session I attended. So uh, I immediately started hounding my transportation facilities people on a lot of uh, ideas and thoughts that I hadn't thought of for the, thank goodness I got a good team because they had thought of, most of some of the things, but we, we were able to uh, check back and make sure that we understood. Um, again, any comments, please make them in the chat and, and we'll get back to you. Um, lastly, we'll um, turn the time to CAS President Bevan um, Davern from Golden Hills to speak about the Chief Superintendent session yesterday. Bevan? Hi everyone, good morning. We also had a, a very good session. It went on for uh, uh, quite a while, I think uh, a little more than 90 minutes. Uh, we covered a lot of ground in there from uh, CAS as a professional association. There's a little bit of time spent on that. Uh, certainly right now boards have uh, lots of questions uh, about that and I think uh, two of the, uh, of the big pieces there is that uh, professional association, a recognition in, in legislation for that doesn't really impact um, the board employee uh, relationship that boards and superintendents have. So, uh, and th there were, there were uh, questions about that. I think questions floating around about that right now. And uh, those things are, are not impacted. Contracts, uh, disciplinary action, none of those things are, are impacted. But that was a little part of the conversation. And then it shifted, of course, to what uh, everyone is working on right now, and that's uh, preparation for re relaunch. Uh, there's an awful lot of pressure right now uh, it coming from many communities uh, in lots of different ways, and uh, school districts are managing that, uh, managing the communication. <clears throat> uh, I think uh, most districts are planning to support students who are not comfortable or not able to return to school. And looking at the planning for that, uh, there was some conversation about the costs involved in that. 
And uh, while there was a little variation in what districts expected to have to find as far as funding, uh, certainly everyone agreed that there were additional costs and they're not insignificant in supporting uh, those learners. So uh, there's also conversations around the use of masks um, and a little bit of talk about how they were being used, if there was variations on some of the recommendations, and then a discussion about uh, what enforcement would look like or, or what uh, a strategy towards encouraging uh, the use of masks within uh, whichever recommendations that were being made in school districts. So I think uh, still lots of conversation about maintaining strong partnerships with parents uh, while at the same time uh, protecting health and safety of everyone in the classroom and how do you manage exceptions and all those kinds of things. So uh, a very full conversation uh, that took us uh, around a number of, of areas, but uh, no surprises uh, for anyone on, uh, that's what the focus is and what everyone is dealing with right now. Perfect, thank you, Bevan. Um, any comments or, or questions again in the chat? Um, it sounds like all the sessions were amazing. It's too bad, you know, if we were together, maybe we could change and, and uh, have time to be in, in more of the sessions. So, Without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Andre Corbal, the Deputy Minister. His um, bio will be in will be put into the chat. Uh, I would like to say I've had the. Uh, so now um, I'm going to hand it over to David. I've spent a bit of deja vu this morning. David Kiohan and I spent some time in CAS in Zone Six, and then I see my good friend Jim McClellan that I started my education career with in Westwind a long, long time ago. Um, but I'm gonna hand it over now to David and he's going to take over introducing the CAS Workplace Wellness um, presentation. So I'll, I'll turn it to him and we'll, I'll be back with you in a, after we're done this session. Thank you. Dexter, thanks so much. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure to set the context for your morning. Uh, for those uh, who are new, and I want to give a very special welcome to CAS to all new members in this in this year. You're you're entering a great organization. Um, I've been blessed and privileged to be part of it for 21 years uh, before retiring and assuming this new role as executive director. Uh, 19 years as a chief superintendent and two years as a deputy, and I only give that history statement to illustrate what I think is a very important point, that through my time in CAS, I'm not sure I would have ever come close to, to quote Ed Harris in the Apollo 13 video, my finest hour, uh, if I didn't have the opportunity uh, to extend collaborative work uh, to a team that I worked with in district office and even broader. CAS has always been about that, and we're entering a very exciting time because uh, Today we're going to be looking at um, things that guide our professional practice, uh, superintendent's leadership quality standard, system leadership, how wellness is a very important part of that. And I, I think our deputy minister is correct that when we see the information you're going to receive and your capacity to deliberate upon that and bring a sense of assurance to yourself and others that it will make a big difference, why wouldn't we want to be regulated as a professional association? So very pleased to be working on your behalf. And uh, I will start uh, by just briefly addressing the notion of this leadership quality standard. CAS supports this standard, of course, from Alberta Education, and it provides a common frame of reference for defining professional practice. CAS professional learning opportunities and resources are dedicated to supporting superintendents and system leaders in building their professional practice capacity in order to support quality school leadership and teaching to create optimum learning for all students in Alberta. With respect to uh, the colors in the slide, I just want to emphasize that the image with the braid and standard has been representative of CAS's work in the last two to three years. 
supporting implementation of the SLQS and system leader professional practice. And last year, we added the wellness image based on input and direction we are receiving from you about staff and personal wellness. As we know, the standard is legislated and based on input and direction provided by CAS when it was first written. CAS has also completed work on system leader resiliency and believes that one can only meet the standard when one is well. Given your messages about working together, the wellness image to us represents people working together and supporting one another and using the colors in the braid to be coherence with our professional practice focus. We've been fortunate to receive our full support for our wellness initiative from the McConnell Foundation. And based on hearing from you and working with WellAhead, our current outcome is evident in the materials posted on the CAS website. And if you simply Google casalberta.ca backslash resources wellness, you'll find this material. Brian Angelic and Jim McClellan have been leading this work for CAS members. And before I turn it over to them, I'd like to share about the updates we have made to the practice profiles. The CAS practice profile tool is intended to support implementation, awareness, understanding, and application of the superintendent leadership quality standard. And if we see the profile itself, I think in its philosophical construct, it's bang on like Sandy McDonald referenced yesterday. As professionals, we can reflect on our work and ask some simple questions. As Sandy illustrated, how are we getting better at what we're supposed to do and what evidence will support this? And what would we do next based upon the evidence that we are encountering? So you'll see in the practice profile under evidence and practice area for growth, there are some prompts there to guide some personal decision making. I think it's a very robust tool. It can be used as a, as a personal professional growth plan tool. It can be used for system coaching, for collaborative work in your jurisdiction, and for a team to support the superintendent in terms of the expectations of the SLQS that the board and the superintendent may have put together. Last summer, um, I should mention that as BOA, introduce their practice profiles and an exemplar is shown to you on the right of your screen for human resource practitioners. We are going to be sending a more thorough update on in upcoming CAS weekly updates. For today, we want to highlight adaptations we have made to the SLQS practice profile. Pending CAS board approval and any feedback we hear from CAS members, we will confirm the changes as well as adapt the system education leaders practice profile. And for today, we posted this version with the workplace wellness materials. So system leaders play a critical role in ensuring quality school leadership, quality teaching, and optimum learning for all students in Alberta. And to meet the respective professional practice standard, all teachers, school leaders, and system leaders need to be well. The role of system leaders includes supporting their own wellness and the well-being of school leaders, teachers, and other staff and students. And the comprehensive and integrated workplace wellness plan will address the well-being needs of all involved in supporting optimum learning for students. A little bit about the CAS workplace wellness framework. Based on research, practice, and work references, five conditions appear to have the potential to create and sustain a positive workplace wellness environment. The CAS workplace wellness framework is intended to address personal and system workplace wellness. The workplace wellness conditions and indicators are included in the SLQS and system education leaders practice profiles as CAS believes that wellness and safety are integral components of ensuring quality school leadership, quality teaching, and optimum learning for all students. 
And now I'm honored to introduce our two wellness leads for CAS. Jim McClellan is a CAS Director of Leadership Learning for Wellness. He has served as a Chief Superintendent for three different school authorities, most recently with Foothill School Division. He has provided support to school authorities as an education consultant with the Alberta School Boards Association and worked as a senior field coach for Husky Energy for three years after retiring as a superintendent. With Husky Energy, Jim worked with 170 leaders throughout Western Canada to deliver curriculum for the coach approach to communication and leadership. Jim has completed a master's degree at San Diego State University and has earned coaching certification through the International Coaching Federation. He is currently pursuing advanced level certification training. And Brian Angelic is a CAS Director of Leadership Learning for Wellness. He has extensive experience in mental health and well being with an expertise in an understanding of positive mental health and comprehensive school health. During his time as superintendent of Prairie Rose School Division, he designed and implemented a holistic model of wellness based on the science of positive psychology. Since retiring as a superintendent in 2017, Brian has spent much of his time working with organizations using the language of psychological capital to link wellness and leadership for individuals, teams, organizations, and communities. This includes how to create safe conversations for those struggling with mental wellness and those trying to help. Brian has completed a master's degree in education administration leadership at San Diego State University. Much of his work now includes help creating safe and specific conversations related to mental wellness and leadership. Jim and Brian, we're very pleased to have you here and I'll turn it over to you for your presentation. Thank you, David. What you uh, failed to mention was that you and I were in the same cohort at San Diego State University for three summers. Uh, and uh, it's an awesome program and we had uh, a lot of fun too while we were there in San Diego. Go Aztecs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a quick, here's, here's the agenda and the takeaways for today. I just want to make uh, an additional comment on the logo. It was felt by uh, cast members as we moved about the province doing our interviews and by the uh, committees that we worked with and the board of directors that for cast members to be able to do their their job in the most effective way that for sure wellness needed to be a focus there too. So the wellness logo was added to the cast logo for those reasons and uh, supported by the board of directors and uh, we really feel that it's it's an important addition to the logo and uh, certainly has some some meaningful uptake across uh, cast members work in the province of Alberta. Thanks Jim. Uh, good morning everyone. I am Brian Angelic and uh, thank you David for the great summary of the wellness work to date. Um, Jim and I did a presentation to CAS, of course, back in June, and we're certainly not going to repeat that presentation. Um, we have a couple of guests who will uh, add some value to the presentation that we did before, and we are going to provide just a, a real brief synopsis of some of the background work uh, for those of you who were not able to attend in June. So the first thing we'll point out is this CAS School Authority Wellness Interview view report is posted on the CAS website. The address is on the slide. The interviews that Jim and I did with over 60 school authorities that led to this report informed to a great extent the current draft of the CAS Place Wellness Planning and Implementation Guide that is fundamental to the uh, presentation today. This visual shows a number of wellness frameworks and the conditions within those frameworks leading to sustainable and scalable continuous improvement in wellness. The five conditions in the CAS workplace wellness framework are on the far right in blue. 
And um, I don't expect you to certainly look at this in detail, but if you had simply looked for the color coding across the table, each color represents similar conditions across these six Canadian wellness frameworks. The five CAS conditions are those that are most common across the other five frameworks that we studied. In some cases, we combine the conditions into new broader categories in order to find the balance between simplicity and research promising practices. So the uh, interviews that we did and the research of the frameworks um, that we have done have led to the creation of the Workplace Wellness Planning and Implementation Guide. And um, the framework that you see on the right, the pretty colored flower, includes the five conditions uh, that we are using within the guide. And the guide, of course, is intended to help you plan and implement workplace wellness in your school authority. So we know uh, from our research very clearly that simple or silver bullet quick fixes for workplace wellness will exist. And what's required is for us to take a comprehensive and integrated systems-based approach. While programs can work together to support workplace wellness, no one program, no one binder can cover the range of conditions that will lead to particularly sustainable and scalable continuous improvement in workplace wellness environments. So this framework um, of the five conditions uh, was built specifically with school authorities in mind. Uh, Jim, do you have anything that you would like to add to this information for this slide? Uh, Jim, you're muted, sorry. Sorry, Brian, sorry, everyone. Um, just want to comment on Brian's contribution here. The, certainly the, the framework that we're using was a result of Brian's work with uh, um, many different organizations across the country. And certainly uh, the result is, is, uh, has a, a very sound research base and, and certainly a document that we're very proud of. So thanks for that, Brian. So here is an example of, of uh, one of the pages within the guide, and it just is uh, it just shows the process that school authorities can go through and individual cast members can go through to uh, commence their work on on uh, workplace wellness. And important to note here that this this particular document, <laughs> excuse me, is not designed to be linear. Um, it's not a formula. Uh, the, the intent is that you will plug in where it fits for you and then maybe um, one of the good ideas might be to start with your strengths and, and move from there. So this is just an example of, of one of the conditions. Uh, we have here condition one. We have the description for that condition, the indicators that would allow you to demonstrate that you're uh, meeting the needs within that condition. And then a bit of a, of a review, a little, a little audit, if you like, of where you're at with respect to all of the components of that particular condition. So it's just a bit of a cheat sheet for you to say, yes, we are well on our way or we're not, and, and uh, we'll help you identify the needs with respect to workplace wellness in your school authorities. And then the next page on the right side there is, is uh, a working document and we've been through this at our at our webinar back in June, as Brian mentioned. Uh, but this is all available uh, on the CAS website, and uh, we think just a very useful little tool. And then if we go to the next slide, Cheryl, we've got um, just uh, kind of a good place to start. Is is also the uh, available on the CAS website, and it uh, is uh, even a more detailed little audit that you can do to help you uh, develop your workplace wellness 
uh, planning in in your school authorities. And I just want to make a comment here about our visits around the province. So we did 60 or almost 70 um, interviews across the province in, in uh, school authorities, Francophone, Indigenous, as well as uh, public Catholic uh, school authorities. And, and uh, very interesting that in almost every case, uh, superintendents were a part of the interview process. And so I, I think that speaks to the importance of wellness at this particular time. Uh, it's even more ramped up, but uh, I just thought that that was a very interesting note that uh, in uh, just about every case, superintendents were there. It's uh, now my pleasure to welcome Genevieve Montemuro from the University of Alberta to our CAS Summer Conference. Jenny is a research coordinator with the School of Public Health, and she will in introduce a video that they have produced that we're launching with CAS today. Jenny and the U of A, along with Dr. Kate Story, have been working with Well Ahead on this video project. The video project supports the workplace wellness framework and the guide to planning and implementation. Jenny and Dr. Kate Story have supported our work leading to the creation of the CAS Workplace Wellness Planning and Implementation Guide. And uh, those of you that attended the CAS event in June will have seen a, a different video. That was the very first video that this project uh, has supported. So we're now on to video two. And with that, I'll ask uh, Genevieve to unmute and to uh, introduce the video. Great, thanks so much, Brian uh, and Jim. I really appreciate it. Um, just a kind of quick overview. So this video is uh, one of six videos that we're producing as part of this research project, um, which we've done uh, with funding support from Well Ahead and the McConnell Foundation, and obviously very closely connected to um, the work that you've been doing. Um, and uh, I think that you know the important piece is that this project is really aiming to try and surface some diverse stories of wellness um, to inform and inspire Canadian school jurisdictions who are adopting their own culture of wellness uh, to improve the health of their school communities. So the video that I'm showing today um, was created uh, with support and collaboration from Northland School Division um, and I wanted to uh, recognize Stephanie Sutherland who's the Director of Student Services uh, and she and I uh, and her colleagues worked very closely on this um, for this project. I'm excited to share it um, and uh, I think uh, one of the things that we really heard across all of our interviews um, was this idea of wellness as a precondition for learning. And I think in Northland specifically, uh, we talked a lot about the importance of supporting health, identity, and academic uh, success for students, uh, but also the need to support staff well-being uh, while they're working with these students to help them achieve their, their best life success. So without further ado, I will uh, present the video or so to speak is yours. Thanks, Brian. Uh, so we have uh, 15 minutes here and we'll try and come under that, uh, or we will. Um, so uh, let's get started. So thank you so much for having us today and a big thank you for, to CAST and ASBO for keeping uh, workplace wellness a focus right now, uh, especially with all the rapid developments um, with the school reentry plans. Uh, there's no doubt uh, lots of stress and anxiety among uh, educators and other education staff um, right now, but we're, we're glad the ACPP can support. Um, for those of you um, who don't have ACPP benefits, we hope that you can still um, find some takeaways from this presentation. Uh, my name is Brennan, my colleague is Megan. Our titles at ACPP are Workplace Wellness Consultants, um, and our work solely focuses on supporting school divisions with their efforts on workplace wellness. So there's five of us on our team. Um, we, we work um, with central office staff. Um, there's not enough of us to support uh, the 58,000 uh, education staff that, that, ACPC, uh, that ASVP covers. So um, we, keep it, we keep it limited to uh, school division staff, uh, central staff, uh, principals, leadership, um, wellness champions. Um, Brian, do you mind going to the next slide or whoever's uh, controlling there? So uh, I'll take you through uh, the five conditions here and we'll talk about how we can support with each condition. Uh, I just want to say first 
Um, we'll get, we're giving you some examples, but uh, our work is very flexible. Every school division's at a different place. So we, we adapt our work um, to meet where they're at. Um, so, uh, you know, these are, these are some good examples of what we've, we've done in the past, but we're, we're always open for feedback. We're always adapting our work to, to suit your needs. Uh, do you mind clicking? And there we go. So um, support with building effective uh, wellness plans. So um, right off the bat, we can support with creating an integrated plan of action. We use frameworks such as CASAS to do this. Previously, we didn't have CASAS framework, but we're definitely trending towards supporting that now. Uh, we can help you assess your division needs. So we're, we're experienced with using audits and organizational survey tools to um, identify interests, needs, strengths, weaknesses, um, goals. Uh, we can run sessions for you on, on that topic. Um, helping with uh, building your wellness committee. So uh, we sit on several wellness committees throughout the province. Um, we can help, we can provide guidance on forming the committee, uh, have meetings with you about it, help to write any documents. Uh, we can do group-led activities to um, get some of these tasks done and get things started. Uh, if you're not sure where to start at all, um, we can suggest who might be a part of a group like this so that um, we can keep whole school and whole school division uh, approaches going uh, so that everybody's included. Um, the idea readiness tool is uh, specifically mentioned in the framework. Um, the idea readiness tool is a, uh, an example of one of those high level audits that we can do. It's kind of a pre-assessment to understand if your, um, your initiatives will, will, will fly or flop, um, but we can run a, a session on that. Uh, thank you, and we'll just move on to condition two here. Okay, so examples of condition two, uh, we, can, um, we can join your wellness committee as an external standing partner. Uh, we're happy to provide resources and information as needed and provide any ongoing support as we work on, together on that. Um, we can facilitate sessions um, to help develop your mission and vision statements um, for your committees. Um, we can help you create the terms of reference and any other guiding documents. Uh, to get everybody on the same page, um, making sure that there's some documents to fall back on if there's any delay in progress, uh, like we saw in March, or if there's any staff turnover. Um, we, can, we can ensure that, that things are in place um, to keep it going. Uh, we will provide presentations to encourage leadership buy-in. Um, we talk about this all the time. Uh, leadership is integral to um, successful and sustainable wellness and workplace wellness in wellness initiatives. Um, we can promote the value on investment. Um, we can provide research on workplace wellness, um, you know, about keeping healthy and happy employees at work. Um, we provide tools and resources for planning, implementation, and maintenance. Um, that's pretty broad, um, but uh, we, we provide many resources, so, so ask us um, specifically about that. And we'll just go on to condition three here. So, of course, um, ACBP provides relevant staff health data. Um, an example of this is the uh, health profile report. Um, it has the, your staff's drug utilization um, and uh, drug percentage plan cost um, in that report, as well as the um, employee and family assistance program utilization rates um, and a few other pieces of useful information. Uh, thanks, Megan. We can help you build um, surveys on staff wellness, on employee engagement. Um, we see what works. Um, we, we're happy to consult with you on that and help you create those. Uh, we can share best practices um, around the province and elsewhere on employee health and well-being. Uh, we are all um, certified advisors for psychological health and safety, which is a, uh, a workplace mental health standard created by the Mental Health Commission of Canada. So we can, we can help you with that if, if that's a direction that you want to go. And then um, lastly, we can help you build an evaluation plan. Um, evaluation is so important and it's always ongoing. Um, we're gonna talk, about, Megan's gonna talk more about that. Uh, in a um, so I'll, I'll flip it over to Megan and, and she'll, she'll keep speaking. So thank Thanks, you. Brendan. Yeah, thanks for having us everyone. 
I'll just kind of keep moving us through the conditions here. So condition four is about roles and responsibilities. Um, so some work we can do is we can support your division, as Brendan mentioned, with uh, developing those committees. We can also build some sessions for you um, to help determine, you know, who's responsible for what, what are we trying to accomplish with these committees, you know, what are people passionate about, how can we use a strength-based approach with the folks that have joined our committee. Something else we can do is we can provide ongoing support for wellness needs. So again, that's really going to vary. That's a really big statement. But for example, many of the school divisions that we do work with, they just email us directly with a request for info. So it might be on a certain wellness topic. Um, right now, we've gotten lots of requests around COVID-19 and mental health support. Sometimes we get requests about grant or um, home and health specific resources. So just keep that in mind as well. Lastly, on the slide here, um, we help to facilitate partnerships and other community supports. Um, so we do work with the larger comprehensive school health community and we do our best to stay informed with their efforts. So we can help you explore community partners as well. So we can help you look at organizations that are physically close to your school division and just kind of figure out how they can support your work as well. We'll go on to the next slide, please. So condition five, uh, systemic professional learning. So um, Brendan already mentioned this, but we can provide sessions for your, your wellness committees and your leadership team. We want to note that these again could be customized. Um, we can brainstorm these with you. We can uh, come up with ideas that work best for your school division needs. It can cover a range of things from mental health to social connection, again, to home with health. The second thing on the screen is uh, we do offer mental health first aid training through ACBP. It is a free two-day training. It is currently on hold just due to COVID-19 and uh, not being able to offer it in person. So if that's something that you're interested in or you'd like to explore, you can take our contact information at the end of this presentation and reach out to us and we can uh, explore that with you a little bit more. The third thing on the screen is uh, our Wellness Sandbox. Um, I'm guessing most of you have probably heard of this website or maybe explored it. Um, so it has a lot of great tools for uh, wellness champs and for staff, um, anything from planning tools to wellness related resources. And we do make sure that we put any of the resources we create or our most up-to-date resources on this site as well. So for example, we did recently create a guide for our leaders about returning to the workplace. And it has a lot of helpful tips on how to support staff mental health, it has a lot of uh, related tools linked in that document as well. So we'll, we'll be sure to share that as well in the chat. Um, and then lastly, Brendan did mention this too, but uh, we can help to uh, connect our school division contacts. And uh, we know it can be really helpful to just hear what others are doing and how others are approaching things. So we can act as liaison between our school divisions. One thing we are just starting uh, recently is we're going to be hosting uh, virtual sharing sessions. We hosted one back in June and some of you were able to attend, which was great. And we're actually planning another one on August 25th. So we're just inviting all our contacts to come together. We're just uh, creating an open space for them to connect and share learnings and resources with one another. So I'm guessing many of you probably received some information from us about this already. But again, if you haven't and you want to learn more, um, just write our contact information down after this and we can provide you with a little bit more info. So move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, in this slide, we just wanted to address the valuation and, and Jim and Brian had asked us to um, speak a little bit about our valuation um, today with you all. So we do want to note that uh, on our team, we're consultants. So we're more in the role of advocating, facilitating and supporting. We are one step back from that front line. So how we evaluate our efforts, is going to look a little bit different than how our school divisions evaluate theirs. But with that being said, we do look at things like if our school divisions have made any changes based on our efforts. Do they have the systems in place to support wellness as well as a priority for them? So we use a mixture of both quantitative and qualitative measurements. So for example, for us, that might be tracking how many meetings we had or you know, how many sessions or presentations we offered. But we also try to track the outcome of those meetings. So what was the feedback like? How, um, how were our school divisions able to move forward with that info? But I did want to really turn our attention to talking about how we and our roles um, can support our school divisions that we support with their evaluation. So we did summarize it into kind of three, three main points that you can see on the screen there. So the first one is uh, building an evaluation plan. And uh, we really encourage our contacts to create an evaluation plan prior to implementation. So thinking about this really early on will help you determine what info you need to collect and whether you met your goals. So a simple evaluation question that we often throw out to our contacts, and you can just kind of keep it in your back uh, pocket and again, ask your team throughout the process is, how will we know when we're successful? So again, just kind of keeping that question forefront um, will help to kind of have those conversations as you go on with all your planning, and it's going to help you kind of determine what you want to measure. So your evaluation measures are really going to ch change depending on what uh, your efforts and your goals may look like. So you may decide that you want to use a survey or an organizational assessment, um, but you may do things like measure, uh, you know, your participation rates in a session, or maybe you have an online website and you uploaded a resource and you want to track those hits. So again, that's stuff that will all be determined uh, ahead of time in your evaluation plan. 
And we always just encourage you to get creative with that. So think about what data do you already have access to that you can use? And then what data do you want to create or find a way to track? So thinking about qualitative and quantitative with this is they're both pretty important. So the next point there is about recommending and creating audit tools. So there's many ways to use audit tools. I know all of you are very familiar with many of them out there. Um, so we just want to note that this is something we can support you with as well. We can help you to create a staff survey, whether that's an employee need an interest survey or looking at organizational assessments. But we can also help you um, locate uh, external tools or things that already exist that are out there. Um, we mentioned some of them already, like the idea readiness tool, the guardian minds at work survey. Um, and again, there's a lot of others out there. So that's something we can help you kind of work through. And when auditing or surveying staff, um, there's also ways that it can be done less formally. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, so for example, you could leave a comment box in a common staff space and ask a question to staff and have them enter their feedback there. So we just kind of wanted to note that it's important to think about your spaces, your timing and gatherings that already exist where you can utilize um, to gain that feedback and insight from your staff. And then the last point there is just providing relevant data. So ACPP um, can offer lots of data. Uh, we've mentioned a few examples today, such as our EFAP utilization rates and the health profile report, which I put in the chat box for you all. But this can be really useful just to provide you with a baseline when you're building out your evaluation plan. Um, it can help you look at trends over time and it can also help you determine what areas you want to focus on. So um, our, on our team as workplace wellness consultants, we work really closely with our client consultants and some of you might be familiar with them, but they do provide your school division with an annual report each year. And that report includes benefit data that's specific to your division. So again, this can all be really helpful uh, when kind of just starting to think about those evaluation efforts. So we just want to kind of note that evaluation really can be infused into everything. So it's not only looking at if your wellness efforts were successful, but looking at how things are going overall. So as things are running, how's your committee functioning? Um, how are the efforts being received by staff? So just being sure to ask those questions and share that feedback throughout the process. It, it may not be a straight linear line and, and uh, it, it's going to adapt and change as you go, but there's a way that you can really build off all those learnings as you, as you attain them. So just on to the last slide for me there. Perfect, thanks. Um, so we did have our contact information. It looks like it got cut out, so we can type it into the chat box. Um, so uh, we did run through that pretty quickly. If you have any other questions about anything we've ch chatted about today, I'll put our wellness email in our chat box. Um, feel free to reach out to us for more info. And we just wanna thank Brian and Jim for inviting us to speak. And we wanna thank you all for your attention um, and for having us today. Thank you, Megan and uh, Brendan. You've been very, very clear on how you might support planning and implementation as described in the CAS Guide to Workplace Wellness. Um, I'm now very pleased to welcome Paul Corrigan to the presentation. Uh, Paul's a CAS member, of course, and uh, Assistant Superintendent for Faith and Wellness with Elk Island Catholic Schools. In my wellness interview with Elk Island Catholic Schools, I had a chance to be introduced to their assurance program related to wellness. And it seemed like a no-brainer to ask Paul and Elk Island Catholic Schools to share with you what they've learned about assurance and data related to wellness. We hope uh, this uh, presentation and Megan's and even the video will help to spur some specific conversations with your workplace wellness planning. Uh, welcome, Paul. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, and I just wanted to introduce Therese de Champlain Good, who's with me as well. She uh, oversees our, our assurance um, process as the Assistant Superintendent of Educational Excellence. So um, I, I wanted to take this opportunity to say a quick thank you to Brian and Jim for um, putting uh, wellness squarely on the map um, in terms of making it a central piece of what we're talking about. Uh, in, in the last year, year and a half, there's been a huge shift in this regard um, and it's due in some part to the great work you guys have done. So thank you so much for that. Um, we wanna just talk briefly today about um, the, the great albatross of wellness is uh, generally measurement. Um, at least that has been true for me. Um, and we are an, one of the assurance pilot districts in the province and so I want to talk a little bit about how, how we've meshed our wellness programming with our assurance model a little bit uh, for you here. If the, and hopefully some people can find some useful things out of that as well. So uh, go ahead with the next slide. So I, um, as you know, Alberta Education uh, started the assurance model pilots in 2013. There are six districts across the province who are in the pilot 
um, and uh, EICS is one of them. So for those of you who are not familiar with the assurance pilot, it was giving that jurisdiction flexibility to design their own education plan according to their locally identified priorities, building a very strong engagement process and identifying those linkages between the AERR process and the assurance world. Um, so what you see in front of you is basically that shift from accountability to assurance. Um, and uh, as Paul said, the ICS is one of those. And now with the assurance framework being part of Alberta Education's new movement, um, we feel that we're well positioned to lead the charge and continue the great work that we're doing, and especially in the wellness area. Go ahead, next slide. So for us, um, like everybody, we had a number of wellness initiatives uh, going on a, a few years ago. Um, one of the major initiatives we had was called the Connections Project, um, working with uh, Dr. Jody Carrington and others on this idea of establishing connections. And, and again, as uh, this base foundation of we're all responsible for mental health and mental health is a precondition for learning, I've already been said here today. Um, we worked with all staff, with leadership, and with three teams um, of school-based uh, staff, our chaplains, our family wellness workers, and our health champions to kind of be the, the champions of this project in the schools. And that led to an upswell in our staff um, combined with the assurance project. When we reviewed our goals, it became obvious that one of our assurance goals needed to be about wellness. And that, that was... That was an engagement process of us doing an initiative, but then the response being, this is something we as a division need to be focusing on in the long term. So you see up on the slide, the goal, um, our current goal is part of one of our four assurance goals that we work with with our staff every year. It's kind of opposite to maybe how some people might think about going about it. The, the, the wellness goal of our assurance plan drives much of the work we do. And on the back end, we have been creating the administ wellness administrative procedures. So for the last five years, we have been working on the administrative procedure kind of as a product of the work we're doing driven by the assurance plan. We spent the first year focusing on nutrition, um, always a joy to focus on nutrition. And uh, then the last next two years on mental health, and then this last year on physical literacy, which are the three pillars of our wellness administrative procedure. I've included our mental health piece of our administrative procedure uh, as a link at the end of the slideshow. Um, it bases its work on the organiza organizational conditions for effective uh, school mental health, a document that's already been alluded to here as well. Um, if anybody wants to take, beg, borrow, or steal anything from that, they're most welcome to, of course, out there as well. So the assurance plan is what, as I mentioned, drives it. We have our division assurance plan and then that translates into schools having assurance plans and they have to have um, picked from the strategies in each of the four goals so including the wellness goal and then each of our staff do an individualized staff assurance development plan and they too will have to have a wellness goal as part of uh, what they're they're doing each each year next slide so as paul alluded to Wellness is one of the four goals in our EICS Education Assurance Plan. And we have a public facing dashboard that highlights each one of our goals and each one of the strategies within the goal, which is deeper once you go into the, into the website. Um, if you have the chance, you can go to our public facing website, see the dashboard, and you will see that what we are communicating with our public as well as with Alberta Education, because this does replace our EARR, is our response rates, as well as each one of the goals. And as you go into each of the goals, which I will allude to later, is the, the blueprint and all the priorities that come meld, the local priorities that meld with the Alberta Education priorities. Next slide. Next slide. So as you can see in the area of wellness, um, we have the 
what are they called, dials, so I'm not sure, uh, that, that measure our, our indicators. And again, this is a public facing website, so all of our stakeholders are able to see this at all times. And, and it's live, so as we get data in, then those, those measures are updated. One can click on each of the, each of the areas we have in there to uh, dig down into the data and get multi-year analysis of all the data as well. Um, I'll just add that on the top right-hand corner, you'll see site, EICS, and school year. We can go to each one of the schools in each one of the school years, and we can look at the data over time. And then the schools administrators work with their staff and their parent communities to also highlight where they are on the journey in each one of the goal areas, specifically wellness. This has been, um, again, staff wellness has been one of our uh, focal points for the last few years. And the public facing data and staff wellness has been an ongoing conversation, I'll be frank, with, with our uh, stakeholders and, and leadership group about what exactly should we be posting for the public to consume. And so there are some data measures that aren't on the public website. Um, as a result of that feedback and conversation. So obviously the school leaders have um, access to much deeper data than is on, on the public website as well. Mm -hmm. Just to be more specific, uh, for example, under staff health and wellness, this is where we track staff absenteeism and um, in conversation with the ATA, local rep, as well as our administrators, we decided not to put that as public facing. However, if you dig deep into that met into that quadrant you'll see that there's the explanation of the measure um, and as paul alluded to we have all the data as well as the administrators have the data on each one of the staff members and their and their absenteeism so uh, as you can tell we're very excited about the assurance process our assurance process in general and uh, i'm very excited specifically about the area of wellness and and dealing with this uh, tackling this idea of measurement in, in, in the wellness area. And so we, we are happy to, if anybody had any questions then wanted to further talk about it, we're very open to, to talking about that. Go ahead to the next slide. You know, just a high level, each one of the goals and each one of the quadrants underneath the goals has uh, the survey blueprint. So when you dig down into each one of them, we have specific questions that are asked in each one of the quadrants if it's not coming exact straight from the APORI results. So that's pretty high level. Um, and like Paul said, we can, we can uh, share more deeply if you're interested, but just to show that the whole dashboard has a background to it. Next slide. So as you can see, this is one of the examples of digging into it. And then we, um, the public and stakeholders have access to the multi-year data um, about how we're doing in, in the different areas. So um, one of the things that we've had to overcome, you know, especially particularly in the area of wellness is just a sense of data is just data, it's okay. Um, it, it shows what we need to do next uh, in terms of moving forward. It's not about the number being low or high, it's about how it can inform our practice moving forward. Right, and then if you look at the bottom left-hand side, you'll see on each one of the, um, sections we have what the outcome is that is attached to that section the where the source is coming from so it's either the a annual assurance survey or it could be alberta education apori results and then the explanation of the measure so we are very front for, forward uh, with our data so that we can share with our public but also we are respecting alberta education's uh, criteria go ahead next slide And so just an example of some of the uh, work that we're doing um, on the student side of things there as well. So go ahead, next slide. <clears throat> so another thing we like to report on is uh, the priority-based budgeting. So, so as you see along the top of this slide there, those are our four goals um, as a Catholic board, obviously faith formation, quality teaching, learning, wellness, and then engagement improvement. Our, this also is a report of how much money we spend, how many resources we allocate to each of the given areas um, in, in the course of a given year as well. So go ahead, next slide. That, because you're probably asking, how is that data determined? Um, administrators at their site then will use what we call the running man 
uh, which is great for a wellness uh, initiative, but, uh, but it, it applies to all four goals, um, and indicate what goal this expenditure is meeting. So any time that is devoted to a person that is outside of the classroom, for example, will get one of these running men that we then establish to one of the four goals. So for example, our school-based chaplains, or maybe if any time is given to a health champion, that would be put under there, and then it would feed the dashboard um, data. And just a, a little bit more detail, each goal has strategies, which you can see in our education assurance plan. So the, the running man is attached to a goal and to a specific strategy so that we can determine exactly where the dollars are being spent. Go ahead, next slide. So as I alluded to at the beginning, um, we want to make sure we have coherence between the EICS assurance plan and then the school assurance plan and the staff assurance development plan, which are their individual plans. Um, staff, teachers are, if you may be thinking um, about, well, how does this fit with the professional growth plan? There was a significant uh, conversation with the ATA about that. Um, staff, teachers are welcome to do a professional growth plan as well as a staff assurance development plan. But as a board, we're mandating that they do a staff assurance development plan and that their resource dollars for professional development are tied to the staff assurance development plan there as well. Of course, um, teachers are still required by the ATA to do a professional growth plan for their own personal professional growth. So this way, they need to line up their goals with the four goals of the division. And then throughout the year, the assistant superintendents in Alcalde Catholic School meet with the administrators on a cyclical basis every six weeks where we relook at their school assurance plan. It's a living document. So we talk about each one of the goals and where they are at each, in each of the goals. And um, our guiding question is, is what, are, what are you accepting as evidence that what you're doing has an impact on this goal? So throughout the year, if they're finding that they need to do some alterations to their plan, we are very open to that. And it's a continual conversation. And as well, the school, administrators bring it to their staffs on a monthly basis to talk about their plan as well as their school councils. So the, again, living document so that they're seeing progress as they um, uh, go through the year. Let me go ahead, next slide. So um, as Trez just mentioned, constantly we're, we're, we're meeting with leadership to reflect, to reach consensus, to look at the next steps. One of, the, one of the things that came out from the process is um, our desire, at least in the area of wellness, to have an increased amount of student voice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an example there of something actually staff worked on. It, there was a, the whole staff used the, um, what's that document? That's the Alberta Health document on uh, men, mental health, work, healthy workplaces. Uh, and they, they gave a self-assessment. And then based on that and the data from that, we then jumped to a student, um, division-wide student mental health day where we had students from grades 4 through 12 come together uh, from each of the schools to speak to mental health and the neat thing was our family wellness workers were there to take notes but it was led by students and all the conversation with students we got their goals and priorities back to us and that helped us inform our planning moving forward as well go ahead with the next slide and this is just uh, a one of the, the visuals we had from and still used from our uh, connections project one of the things that's important to us is a sense of getting shared language amongst the division and so we're all using the same words to talk about what we're referring to when we're talking about wellness because as mentioned um, it can be a very big and difficult topic to task so what are we talking about so um, in the ics we focused on shared language and in our mental health ap that that has been linked there you'll see also a document that uh, that talks about the ics's shared language there as well Go ahead to the next slide. And we provide, oh, oh the, the links, okay, are, are in the chat group as well. So that was, uh, that's it for us. Thank you very much for your time and attention today. Appreciate it. And as Paul said, we are always open to have continued conversations if you want to have more information on our assurance process, because we are very excited about it. Well, thank you so much, Paul and Therese. And I mean, you should be excited about it. Uh, such helpful information for you. And uh, thank you so much for sharing and, uh, you know, giving us all an, uh, 
a chance to sort of begin to visualize what uh, the possibilities might be as we begin workplace wellness and wellness and, uh, our planning and uh, or continuing no matter where we are in our journey. Um, the last resource that we're just going to very quickly highlight is a very new resource that's come out from Well Ahead and the McConnell Foundation related to uh, wellness. And it's called Beyond the Binder. Again, the idea that um, you know, no one program is a sil silver bullet answer. And of course, it's the McConnell uh, Foundation through the Wellhead Initiative that pays all the bills for the work that Jim and I are doing, and we thank them for their support. This resource takes a pan-Canadian approach to comprehensive and integrated systemic planning approaches for workplace wellness. Uh, Jim and I recommend you consider the document in your workplace wellness planning. The link is on the page, and in fact, we will share a link to a padlet of resources that we put together for the presentation today that um, you can have a look at as your time permits. I'd also like to stress that uh, our resource is available in French as well. Thanks, Brian, uh, and thank you, Paul. Just a note that Paul also sits on the CAS Wellness Advisory Committee. Um, that committee we meet with uh, three times a year and they offer uh, essential counsel, advice and support as Brian and I go through our work on a regular basis. So, um, and I think all of those committee members are in attendance today as well. So thanks to that committee. And I'd also talk about the CAS well ahead advisory committee. So that has representatives from the ATA, Alberta Education, Alberta Health Services, ASCBP, the Alberta School Councils Association, CAS, and I'm sure I've missed a couple, Brian, but uh, that committee too has provided valuable support uh, as we have moved through our work in the last couple of years. So, so thanks to them. And of course, thank you to Well Ahead. Uh, as they have provided uh, support and advice and direction uh, as we move through the process. Much appreciated for them as well. Um, just want to talk about uh, next steps just for a couple of uh, moments here. So the learning module with respect to workplace wellness is, is underway. Brian and I will be working probably for the next school year within uh, this this particular wellness portfolio and uh, so uh, the learning module is is at the top of the list for us and then a, a resource library uh, through the CAS uh, website that will be available for everyone to have access to and um, and then uh, the, Brian's going to speak to the workplace uh, workplace wellness playbook but I'll just comment on zone meetings that's the next connection back to school authorities around the province for us is this fall's zone meeting so most in september some in october and thankfully those zone meetings now are on different dates uh, throughout the province so we'll be able to uh, to get to all of those and now when and followed by the individual school authority check-ins uh, so coaching mentoring and supporting uh, school authorities across the province. So we'll make those initial connections at zone meetings and then uh, um, support uh, any kind of scheduling that comes with individual school authority check-ins. And Brian and I will be available. You've got some, some planning time uh, from now until 11 o'clock and, and then uh, uh, Brian and I will be available during that planning time and beyond. So anytime you think you need some support or have questions around workplace wellness planning, please give us a call because we're, uh, we're here to support you as you go through that work. So Brian, workplace wellness playbook. Yeah, so just um, early warning, I guess, that the, one of the considerations for our next steps would be to supplement the guide to planning. So one of the things that we are thinking of is putting a community of practice together based on the five conditions, so five small committees that would in turn um, put together some research, uh, particularly around practices and resources. 
So in the guide, we've indicated some examples of some resources that we think are specific to each of the conditions. And also just given a couple of um, high yield uh, strategies or we call them practices um, that can lead to sustainable uh, and improved workplace wellness. So, you know, if one of these areas is of interest to you um, through the CAS newsletter this fall, uh, we'll be advertising, uh, you know, an opportunity to uh, put some kind of a playbook together just to add some more detail to, to the guide.